talk about ETHPM and a lot of this piggybacks off what Lugie was talking about with the Source Verify project, um, how we kind of our attempt to find like a mutually compatible data structure for both of our projects. Um, I'll probably start by giving just a little, um, just a little history of ETHPM, how it works, where we are, where we're going, and then try to open up for discussion as soon as possible. Um, ETHPM is a decentralized package manager. We're just trying to do what package managers in other languages do for Ethereum. Um, it's there are two main components. One is a, a JSON schema. So essentially every ETPM package is just a JSON object and the schema defines how you arrange your contract assets um, and standardizes it. And the second component is an on-chain registry specification. This is just a read and write API for your on-chain registry. So this is a pretty simplified version, but just to give you the full workflow, you start with a smart contract, then you'd uh, create a JSON um, object that represents those contract assets. You publish that JSON file to any content addressable file system, mostly IPFS. And then you would um, write these three pieces of data to an on-chain registry, uh, the package name, the package version, and the content address URI that constitutes a package release um, and inside a package you can also include um, any number of contracts and any number of on-chain deployments um, it's really up to the package author to choose uh, what they think is important to include in the package and so we also have a defined uri scheme so with this one string you can plug that into any tooling or framework that supports ethpm um, and now that tooling will framework, we'll go to the blockchain, look up the URI, pull down the JSON object and expose the contract assets in whatever way is useful. Um, ETHPM started in 2016-ish. It was a joint effort between Piper Merriam from the Ethereum Foundation and Tim Coulter from Truffle. Uh, one important thing to keep in mind is V1 had a single on-chain package registry. Um, this was decided not to be great. It's a lot of maintenance overhead and introduces some security assumptions that weren't ideal. But also it made the developer experience a little um, better. And so far to date, ETHPM v1 has had much more usage than v2. And this is mainly because of Truffle. Um, Truffle's integrated very nicely into its workflow, so it's easy to use. Um, ETHPM v2, which is the current version of today, um, uh, broke the single on-chain registry model, and now we have uh, federated registries. So if you're a package author and you want to publish your packages, you're responsible for deploying your own on-chain registry where, you know, only authorized parties are allowed to release packages. So far to date, we've got a pretty wide range of tooling. Um, we have a CLI, we have a Remix plugin, uh, native support in Brownie, JavaScript, Python libraries, a web explorer, um, but Truffle is still on V1 and we haven't seen great usage or like a large amount of V2 packages floating around. Um, although V2 support for Truffle is in the pipeline and should be available in the, the next major um, bump, version bump. Um, but yeah, so this is just to say that like developer experience has been really important in adoption for ETHPM. Um, without the nice integrated Truffle workflow, we kind of had this chicken egg problem. Protocols and companies, uh, package author or smart contract writers don't hear demand to publish ETHPM packages and smart contract devs are, you know, happy to copy and paste code from GitHub um, to um, build off of other people's code. Um, and so on the right is just some of the top level keys in the JSON schema. Um, and so ETHPM v3, um, it started, um, the conversation started in the source verify Gitter channel, trying to find a, a data structure, a, a standardized JSON um, schema that can work for both of our uses. And this is just really nice because it was very important as like, uh, it's proven very important for package management um, 
for it to be as simple as possible for developers. Otherwise, we'll just copy and paste our code. And um, so now with native support in the compiler, you know, we'll just automatically seed um, the ecosystem with a ton of packages. Um, and hopefully this like spurs adoption and better like software development practices rather than um, copy and pasting code. We've had some productive uh, workshops over the past month. Um, we're quite close, I'd say, to finalizing the V3 spec. There's still some technical like uh, edge cases to iron out. Um, but yeah, so once we iron those out, the next step would be to create an EIP and then work on implementation. Um, and yeah, this is essentially the workflow that I envision or like one instance of it where a, a protocol or auditor um, would have this widget in their GitHub and you just click it to copy and paste the URI and then you can plug it into any um, framework or tooling that you want. It's a really simple spec to implement. It's just JSON, so NPM is used a lot, but that's only for JavaScript tooling, um, which isn't ideal. And NPM also comes with some security concerns. Um, and so, I mean, that's the background. Um, I would like to open up for discussion. Um, here's some important links. I mean, you can find everything from ethpm.com. The Ethereum Magicians uh, Working Group is where most of the discussion is happening. Um, and so, yeah, I, if anyone has any questions, um, it seems like we have a shortage of packages in Ethereum. Um, Open Zeppelin has done a phenomenal job of like building the standard library, but standard libraries only get you so far. Um, and so if anyone has any thoughts on the developer workflow, it'd be interesting to hear those. Why is this something you want to use? Uh, would you find this useful? Um, and then if not, we can move on into the technical details. <laughs>